deducted from their income tax. So as, right. assume $100,000 income, roughly 33% uh, marginal tax rate, you know, you're saving five grand in taxes uh, just from doing that contribution. Okay, well, welcome back to the other, another episode of Bamford & Company. Today we have a good friend of, of mine, is it Cole Baumel from MFG Financial. Cole, thanks for coming today. Appreciate you having me. So I know that we talked over the phone about some different things that we could add value to consumers out there. And one thing that you uh, you brought up was the FHSA, just to clarify there. Yep. <laughs> what, what exactly is that for all, all of our consumers out there? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a new investment account that got introduced uh, in April of 2023 for people who are looking to buy their first houses. And in its core, it's really just a combination of an RSP and a TFSA. And quite frankly, I, I wish I had this account available to me when I was buying my first house because it really is the best of both worlds. On contributions to the FHSA, you get a tax deduction like if you were to do it for an RSP. But the big difference is that on withdrawals for a qualifying home, in your first house, they are tax free and you do not have to repay them back if compared to the home buyer's plan if you were to withdraw money from your RSP to buy your first house, right? So it's a combination of the RSP and the TFSA where quite frankly, you get the both best characteristics of both of those accounts in one simple package. Sounds amazing. It's, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with this is that I know that there are some different things about how much you can contribute to on a yearly basis. Can you can you clarify a little bit yeah. on that? Just because sure. I know everybody's, um, you know, purchasing power out there is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. yep. And this might put it in perspective for the average consumer. Yep. So on a, I'll start with how you uh, accumulate contribution room. So you have to open the account to start generating or accumulating that contribution room. And for every calendar year that you have it opened, you get $8,000 of contribution room up to a maximum of $40,000. So five years, essentially. Right. On a yearly basis, you can contribute up to $16,000 in one calendar year. Simply, you can carry forward one year of unused contribution room. So if you opened it in 2024, the maximum you could do would be 8,000. If you didn't contribute anything in 2024 and carried over to 2025, the maximum you could do in 2025 would be 16,000. Okay. Fast forward even further and you get into 2026 and say you haven't done anything yet and now your total contribution room is 24,000 the maximum you can do there is only 16,000. So you can only ever carry forward one year of unused contribution room in that calendar year. So there's a little bit of finessing and playing and strategizing for when and how much to contribute to the FHSA, which is again, very case dependent and, and, and client specific, but there are ways that you can best utilize the account depending on your situation. Right. Well, that's where you come in. That's where that's right? exactly where we're supposed to come there. in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's like, awesome. For, for example, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough that, you know, a lot of my friends and a lot of my clients um, have been buying their first houses this year. And each one has been a little bit different with, uh, with how we've gone it, uh, about it. And, and the strategy behind each one is always a little bit nuanced to, to each uh, client and friend, right? So we work with the client and figure, okay, when are you trying to buy your house? Do we need to be contributing now? Or can we wait until, you know, I've got an offer in on a place or I'm seriously considering buying a place to then contribute, right? Because right. the biggest thing that we're trying to do is to provide flexibility for our clients, right? Because we understand that life happens, right? You don't want to put money into the FHSA just for the sake of putting it in there. And then all of a sudden your car breaks down or, or a trip of a lifetime comes about where you want to go and and go on a trip with your friends and family or whatever it might be, right? So we want to be able to provide that flexibility still and not locking away money um, into the FH FHSA. So it's all about timing uh, and, you know, when are you seriously looking to buy this house? Or are you just kind of tippy-toeing around and, and getting feelers out there? Or are you actively looking? Do you have an offer in place? Do you have an offer accepted? Okay, we need to get our uh, wheels turning to get, things, sure. uh, to get things moving properly. So then when you're saying is that it's kind of a timing basis, you know, so mm -hmm. the biggest thing is to get it started, correct? Yes. And then is that you get that grace period, maybe of that, of that extra, you know, if you miss that calendar year is to get that 16,000, mm -hmm. that makes a big difference for somebody, you know, even mm -hmm. when you look at, 
the average home as a starting home, like for single family, we're probably looking at 400 and mm-hmm. 450 just to get into, you know, a decent neighborhood. Doesn't mean it's the best house, mm-hmm. but yeah. it means, um, but that is getting you in that ballpark. So if you started it out with maybe that $8,000 contribution, you plan to buy in the next one to three years, you could potentially not have to pay taxes on any of that money. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. On what you could, on your yeah. down payment? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're, as as you contribute to that FHSA, exact same as if it's an RSP, you get to use that as a tax deduction, right? So for example, you know, uh, if a client put in $16,000 this year, so they opened the FHSA in 2023, put, a, t- put in 16000 in 2024, uh, bought a house in, in the same time, that 16000 gets deducted from their income tax. So as, assume $100,000 income, roughly 33% uh, marginal tax rate, you know, you're saving five grand in taxes uh, just from doing that contribution. If you were to push it out even further and, you know, all of a sudden it's 40,000 that you've been able to contribute over the lifetime uh, before buying that house, you know, 40 times three, 30% is, is what, uh, 18, 18, 15% is something like that or 15 right. grand. So it, uh, it makes a big difference. For sure. So you mentioned that you had some friends and some people that you went through the process with recently. (laughs) Um, Is was that the same case for them that they were able to save, you know, that much or or just what the timing was? It was it a little bit easier to be? Was it more around that, you know, eight, sixteen thousand, you know, twenty four? And not everybody's going to get up to that forty thousand to be able to do that to wait. Right. Yeah, exactly. And and so for for my clients, because they've been able to buy their house, first house is here relatively recently, you know, they only were able to contribute up to that 16,000 right. and get roughly about five grand in, in tax savings. Um, you know, I've got a couple that are still accumulating that room mm-hmm. that, you know, they don't really have a time frame on when they're looking to buy that first house. They, they know they want to, but they're not in any rush. So, you know, over time, you, we will see that the, the savings and tax for, for clients is going to grow because we are going to be able to contribute more and more and more because they are delaying when they're going to be buying that house right. for themselves. No, it makes a lot of sense. And it's a great, uh, it's a great piece of value for people mm-hmm. to, to know that's there for mm-hmm. them. Yep. Now, in regards to first time home buyer, how do we justify a first time home buyer? Maybe you can take us through the government's the, the government that, that, uh, definition. That. So it has to do with you not living in a house that you or your spouse have owned for in the previous four calendar years. So okay. if I owned a house, six years ago, right. sold it, and then was living in a rental property for the last four, I would qualify as a first time home buyer. Okay. That's amazing. That's good information mm-hmm. to have. Yep. So Cole, if someone was looking to have some further help with the FHSA, <laughs> you know, how would how would they go about and do that? You know, it, there's there's lots of really good pieces of information on the internet, you know, to, to help educate yourself around what the best ways to utilize it for yourself and, and try and figure okay what is the way to use it in my situation but you know as sitting in my chair as the financial advisor you know i always like to say that we are the the professionals you know when i go to the doctors i'm not trying to say hey i think you should do this that and the other thing or going to the dentist and say i need you to try and fix my molar because of sure. this so i always try and say like you know let your financial advisor really provide that value and service that they've promised you and, and why you're working with them right so Ask the tough questions of your financial advisor. You know, is this right for me? Do I qualify? What are the best strategies in terms of timing? Lay it all all on the, uh, the table for them and, and let them kind of pick up the pieces and paint that picture for you because quite frankly, that's what you hire your financial advisor to do is, is provide that value for you. You know, people can do it by themselves. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, it's just if you if you have an advisor that you trust, you know, I always suggest to go to them and, and get their take on it, right? Because they might see something that you know, you might have missed. Uh, they might not know something about you that if, if you didn't have that conversation that they would miss, right? So you really right. got to collaborate with whoever your trusted advisor, your trusted professional is in that scenario to really be able to get the maximum out of it is, is how I always try to approach it with people. For sure. We live in a professional world yeah, exactly. at the end of the yeah. day and we all have our specialties and, yeah. it, and it goes a long way. Now, I, I understand the side of the savings of the, of the tax dollar is it you know, um, when we're able to purchase a home, what's the worst case scenario though? Like what happens when say, yeah. you know, life happens, maybe, you know, maybe something unexpected and they're not going to be able to buy a home in yeah. Canada. Maybe they're going to move out of the country. You know, what, what would be worst case is that would they just have to pay tax on, on what they've put in as they took that money out or so 
there's a couple different scenarios. If if life happens where I need money now, but it's not for a first time home or a qualifying withdrawal, it simply acts as if it's an RSP where okay. the money you pull out, you would be taxed at, right? So it, quite frankly, assuming that you're pulling out at the same tax bracket that you put the money into, it's a, a net zero effect, really. Okay. You're not gaining anything in that regard. And you're not really penalizing, but you're not using the account to its full potential. So that's if you need the money for a non-qualifying withdrawal. But if for whatever reason, you know, you, you've gone 10, 15 years um, and it's just like, you know what? Home ownership isn't in the cards for me. And or because of whatever reason it might mm-hmm. be there are ways that you can transfer it. You can transfer it to your RSP, essentially, okay. is the easiest way, right? So instead of just sitting in the FHSA, it can transfer over to your RSP. You don't get a, an RSP tax deduction because you've already gotten that from contributing to the FHSA. Right. There's no penalties in that regard. It just acts as a, a an in-kind transfer, basically. So the client, the investor, isn't penalized for not buying a first home, right? That, right? That's not the intent of, of the, the cutoff period of the FHSA. Right. Well, all in all is that it sounds like if you're, if you're actually planning on purchasing a home, there's really mm-hmm. not a whole lot of other better solutions mm-hmm. out there, is there? No, it, it's funny. So you know, again, being lucky enough that, you know, I've been able to work with a lot of close friends and close family uh, in, in my profession and in my job. I was banging the doors down in December and November of 2023 saying, guys, I need you to open up this account because of all the benefits that it provides from opening it in 2023 versus 2024. Right. And a couple of them, we said, yeah, okay, we'll get around to it. We'll get around to it. It's it's December 20th and I haven't gotten the text back and I'm banging on the door. <laughs> say, guys, we need to do this. Like this, sure. is, this is a no-brainer win, win, win scenario for you guys to be able to have this account open and available for you guys knowing that you guys are looking to start buying your houses here in the next two, three, even next year, right? right. So it is, it's a no brainer. Like I said, off the start, I wish I would have had it uh, for when I was purchasing my first house. And to anybody who is in that stage of life, even if you're not ready to contribute 8,000 or even a thousand bucks to it, get it opened as soon as you can, because that's when you start accumulating that room to be able to take advantage of it later down the road. Well, that's good. Is it not every financial planner is knocking down people's doors and sending that many texts? Yeah, so that's, good that, <laughs> I, that's good that you got that. I was <laughs> throwing acorns out of guy's window, getting him to come down. He was uh, he was working nights and everything, and he wasn't answering my phone calls, so I was having to throw acorns at his window, waking him up, sort of thing. So it was uh, it was pretty good. Uh, Pretty good story that I like to tell every once in a while. Well, so. that's good. You know, going the extra mile. <laughs> trying say, to, yeah. trying to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's great, Cole. Is that I really appreciate you coming on here today, giving us some some really valuable information to for all of our clients. You know, mm-hmm. maybe if it's for for uh, parents that are looking to to help their kids on their next adventure and to get into the housing market, we know that everything's has made a huge adjustment and and that's happening more often than we see, right? Yep, so, exactly. uh, great information. I'd love to have you on again. Is that if you are looking for any of the details on Cole or MFG, please look at the uh, descriptions at the bottom. Is it we'd be happy to pass off your information there. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Cole. Thanks for having me. You betcha. Yeah, sounds good, buddy.